Today on Midlife Conversations, I've been so excited for this guest because I found her on social media. Her name is Sherry and she is hysterical. She is my new favorite midlife person to follow. Um, she is a pure comedian <laughs> and I abs I just love her whole outlook on life, how she is thriving, fully thriving in midlife. I have so many questions for her. If you're watching on video, you can see how amazing she looks. If you're not on video, you'll have to check her out later because she already defies the odds just with her hair. <laughs> She's got this incredible purple and blue hair, which I absolutely love. And the thing that has me so motivated by you every day, Sherry, when I look at your content now is how you'll take something that would usually send other women into a spiral, uh, that would usually want them to not leave their house or have them questioning things. And you turn it into amazing, empowering content, whether it's through humor or just a different perspective on it, you really have been that light for us. So thank you thank for being you. here today. Thank you for having me. I I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. So I guess let's back up a little bit. How did you even end up speaking into these topics? How'd you get on TikTok and Instagram and where did this come from? So uh, it, I honestly, it, it stemmed from my own experience with COVID, uh, at post COVID recovery. Um, I just had a different outlook on life and, um, I started making content early on. I, I own a couple of businesses, so I thought I would use my social media for creating content around my business. And it just did not turn into that at all. It turned into me having fun. And it, I really was like completely in enthralled with this app that could create content and could make videos and it made it really, really easy. And I just kind of got sucked down the rabbit hole of doing some trend stuff in the beginning. And then I had this one, I don't know why one day I was inspired to make a video that was um, called the sounds only Gen X years. Mm -hmm. And it was like just little clips from the beginnings of uh, some of our, the best, most iconic songs from our childhood. And that video, when I initially posted it, I had no expectations whatsoever of this video. I just made it. And it was like, it took me like 10 minutes to make. And it, initially when I posted it, it didn't really do much because I didn't have a lot of followers. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I had been do I was an investigator for most of my life. So I just started digging and wanted to know, I wanted to understand how it worked. And somebody said, well, if something doesn't work the first time, just repost it. And so I did like a month later, I reposted that video. I went to bed, woke up. I picked up like 40,000 followers overnight. Whoa. So, it same, was like, so you it, recorded one video that you thought would do well. It didn't do anything. And you just literally reposted it again. I didn't even think it would do well. I had no expectations of it. But when I had, somebody had said, well, if you, you know, just repost your content. I, I don't know why I picked that video. Cause I think okay. I loved it. I had so much fun with it. And I just, yeah. the video. I reposted it and it just went viral. Okay. And I started picking up all these followers and then I started, I did what I think a lot of creators do in the beginning. I got sucked into the idea that I had to make just this one kind of content, right? which was what TikTok was rewarding me for. That's what their algorithm was doing at the time is like, oh, they wanted you to be in a niche. And so I started making more Gen X content, but then I started getting a little bored because I was like, well, sure. before, you know, TikTok, I really didn't identify as Gen X. I mean, I am, but it wasn't like a label that I gave myself. So, <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I can only talk about this so much. And, um, so I, I also at the same time was about to turn 50. Yeah. And so I was going through all of, I was in the throes of it, man. I'm in the throes of pre perimenopause. Very I'm in familiar. the throes <laughs> of like, my mind was eating me alive at the idea that I was turning 50, not feeling 50. Like I don't mentally feel that way. I physically don't feel that way. And this, I spent my entire year of 49 worrying about turning 50, literally mm. talking about turning 50. Like I'm going to be 50. I'm going to be, I was obsessing over it. And a lot of my content that came out of that was because of that. I was talking about this sort of process that I was going through almost more, I think mourning almost my youth of like thinking yeah. when I turned 50, like this is, this is, it's a huge milestone. And it also is like sort of this point in life where people start to label you and they start to, sure. to have this different identity. People see you differently. And, um, just the ageism, you know, like all of it, yeah. but prior to 50 in my forties, I really didn't feel that way. That's but how this, I felt. This, this I didn't think looming, about it in 50 in forties at yeah, all. This big looming number, this big five O. And I remember telling people all of my year 49, if I swear to God, if you buy me one black balloon, <laughs> one over the hill, anything, I'm going to bury you with it. Like do yeah. not do not. And so I, I obsessed about it for a whole year. And I look back and I'm like, I wasted all of year 49, mm. worried about 50. but then something happened when I turned 50. And I think that, that as I was creating content about turning 50, and then I actually did it. And then once it was behind me, I was like, I don't feel any differently. 
I did, but it wasn't because of turning 50. I was already going through this sort of awakening process of like, I don't want to be labeled. I don't see myself that way. I don't, I don't subscribe to this idea of what we were taught old or aging is sure. you know, when we coming up in, in our childhood, you know, they painted these pictures of people that were at 50, they looked really old, you know, yeah. and, and society starts to see you differently. And they start, especially women, you know, you start going through menopause and ever so much of our, our lives, so much of our worth uh, for not to me and not to ourselves, but mm -hmm. a lot of society's worth is based on our fertility and based for on sure. our families. And there's just so many things that, and I was really in the throes of all of that sort of like unraveling, if you will. Yeah. And so what evolved out of that was me creating a lot of content about my own experience, my own awakening, my own, um, just, you know, embracing where I'm at in life and saying, you know what, I don't, I don't know. That's not who I am. I don't subscribe to that. And I don't, just because you tell me that I'm supposed to be this at this age, I don't, I I'm, I'm a rebel. I'm not doing, I'm not doing yeah. it. I refuse. I, so I started making a lot of content around that. So when I watch your content now, it's, it's funny, it's sassy. It really, it does have that rebel side when you were first starting this. And I, I guess I should, I wouldn't go back and see some of your beginning content. Were you still that way? Or were you talking more about your fears or your thoughts no, it wasn't, around it? It wasn't fear bait. I mean, I mean, I was just making fun of the whole thing. I was yeah. still being funny. I've always been sassy. I've always been a rebel, mm -hmm. always go against the grain. I've, I've always been that person. Um, and it was, it was more me making fun. I started making a lot of, uh, funny videos around like just us being perpetually adolescent, uh, yeah. you know, sort of this idea of like, how can I be here in this 50 year old body, but I don't mentally, you know, so it was a lot of mental stuff, a lot of just kind of being aware of my own thoughts. And so there was a lot of fun being poked. I was trying to make people laugh at, because yeah. I know I wasn't going through it by myself. So many people are going through the same experience in life. And so I was just making fun. I'm making light of it, if you will, because I, I, I believe that heal, you know, laughter heals people I and agree. laughter helps you embrace or helps you get to a level of acceptance. And I think I was going through the stages of grief turning, yeah. 50. you know, I was like going through all of it. I was mad. I was sad. I was depressed. I was, I, you know, I was in denial. I was like, I'm not, I, I, I think partly because a lot of us didn't plan to, I don't know that a lot of us thought we'd get this far in life, you know? So when you do get there, um, all I could do is make fun of it. Cause that's kind of what I've done my whole life is just make fun of the things that hurt us, make fun of the things that scare us, make fun of the things that, you know, that are, that can be life-changing. Sometimes that's, it makes it easier to digest. And it was for me. And then what came of that was this just enormous amount of people that came pouring out of the woodwork that were like, that's me too. Like they're yeah. into, so it was sort of this, not to jump on any me too, you know, movements or anything, but it was kind of like that. I, and, and it was also very therapeutic for me because I didn't feel alone. You know, I had for all sure. these, people, there were, their misery loves company, you know? So it was like, oh, there's all these people that are commiserating with me, uh, that are in the same place that I am. But see what's different about you. And this is what I'm so curious about is so I know the whole misery loves company thing, but what's different is you don't bring people down this miserable place. Like when I look at your content, I laugh and I feel empowered where you're talking about things that really could bring people into a negative space. Sure. So how did you, how have you worked through that? Because I, you could be excited about creating something and you record, and then you get like these awful people, you know, it's usually like a young guy or somebody that's okay. not relating. How do you, how do you stay in your place and not let that affect you? Because a lot of people listening would, that would send them in a spiral, right? It they would. would it would. How do you, what, did it ever send you on a spiral or how have you handled that? I mean, there's moments, sure. There's moments where it, it, get, it depends on, for me, it's about mindset. So mm -hmm. I found that after kind of after post COVID, I started really shifting my own mindset and, and really sort of being more present in, in the moment and not mm -hmm. allowing my, the negative, um, voice in my head to get the best of me. And that's often when those negative comments come out, most people, that's where they go. They go in their head. They start doubting themselves. Sure. They start, they start thinking of all the things that they're not, or that they believe themselves to not be, and or that they that somebody else has told them that they're not, and they and they 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 take on that persona. For me, that practice of mindfulness and sort of shifting my own mindset. In the past, I might have allowed that to erode mm -hmm. at my own mental health or or my own feelings about myself. But I've always kind of been a big, you know, middle finger in the in yeah. your face kind of person. 
So I just really stepped into that and authentically like embraced that person of like, screw you. I, yeah. I, you know, and so there are days where we all, we're all human, right? Like I'm human, just like everybody else. So there are days where somebody might catch me on the wrong day and a comment might <laughs> hit me just wrong, but I've learned to use that as fodder as, as, as content. Like I have fun with that. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, sometimes I might get a little bit carried away, <laughs> but for the most part, I try to take a negative and spin it in a way where I can still make, I, I still make my point. I still get my message across, but I can, I make people laugh or I make people think. I often just want to make people think differently. I want to empower people to change their own mindset, to embrace sort of where we are in life and realize that all the things that are behind you are behind you for a reason. Like you should be in the now, like enjoying yeah. life right now, because just because you're aging, just because our bodies might be breaking down, mm -hmm. your mind might be breaking down or whatever is going on in your life. That those are things that the, a, they do not define you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you can still have so many things in your life now that you can enjoy. And there's so much more in the future. That's just what I want to give. I want to empower people to see themselves as not uh, just because we're in midlife sure. doesn't mean lives are over. Cause I think a lot of people get in their heads and think, well, I'm, I did it to myself. For, yeah, for, I, 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 I caught myself saying the things like I look good for my age. Right. I, I, same I thing that anymore. No. And I encourage other people don't say that. I just look good. Yeah. You just look fantastic. Like you don't have age. anything to do with your age. You're not defined by that number. And also to know that, you know, whatever other people are projecting onto you mm -hmm. or whatever other, whatever's going on in your life that involves other people, that is not who you are. And like, you just need to be in the moment and embrace sure. where you are. And life is not over. Like, the, I, like I said, I think I spent so much time going, calling myself old, saying I look good for my age, but I call, I literally would catch myself saying say my, to my kids who are nine and 12, mm -hmm. um, uh, well, because I'm old. And mm. it, finally took, it was my nine-year-old one day, wow. she was eight at the time, she was in the backseat of the car. And I made that comment, um, I forget, we were talking about the Pink Panther, I think. And she was like, well, what's the Pink Panther? And so I was trying to explain it to her. <laughs> and she was like, you know, I forget what she said. She said something to me and I was like, well, that's because I'm old. And she went, you're not old. And I was like, well, I'm going to be 50. She's like, so? And it just hit me in yeah. a way where it's like, the words that come out of kids, the things that come out of a kid's perspective a child's perspective yeah. that hasn't really been overwhelmed by society and overwhelmed by mm -hmm. all these lessons, this conformity and the things that society teaches you about how you're supposed to behave, who you're supposed to be, et cetera. What, uh, what old looks like, if you will, they, they haven't been completely affected by that yet. So when she said it, it just really hit me where I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so what? Like she was so right, you know? And it just, that really was a defining moment for me where I was like, I'm not going to say that to myself anymore. I'm not old. 50 yeah. is not old. No, you it's know? not. You know what? You know what? I, I was, I had this awareness the other day. I don't know if you thought about this, but I was trying to think like, why is our generation gen X, like so wanting to redefine over 50? Like, what is it about that? And why do we feel this? Cause I don't remember my mom. I don't remember my mom talking about this. I don't remember this being a thing. Um, but I was, putting it together that we were the first generation that we were told we could have everything, right? Like we were told you could work, you could have kids, you could be, you could look this way. You could, like we were the first generation really told you can have it all. So I wonder if there's something there about turning this corner at 50 of like, but did I not do it all? Or like, there's more of a, uh, an emptiness because of that, because I don't remember, and maybe I just didn't see it. My mom's generation going through this this pivot. No, like this. I, I don't, I don't remember mine doing it either. Neither of my parents, my mm -hmm. mother, my father, and neither of them, my grandparents, even not, I don't recall yeah. any of them. I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of things you could look at philosophically about our generation that might paint that picture. Some people joke it's because we had to grow up so young that we're now going backwards True. in age. Uh, we just kind of refuse. We were we, tougher. We were a lot tougher. Yeah, we've been adulting for so long that we've just decided we're done with that. We just decide, you know, we're we're going to go backwards in age. Then there's also the perspective of 
we were, we've always been rebellious, like our entire generation. I think partly mm-hmm. because so many of us are pretty feral or were feral growing up. Well, a lot mm-hmm. of us care, had to take care of ourselves. We were latchkey kids or whatever. And we've been rebellious our whole lives. So what it almost seems even our music paints the pictures of the rebellion that we went through in the eighties yeah. and the nineties. And I, there's a part of me that does look at that and think, I think it's just our rebellious spirit that's like no just because you tell me or because somebody says this is what old is or this is how you're supposed to be or who you're supposed to be uh, how you're supposed to look how you're supposed to speak whatever I think there's a there's something wired in our DNA that's like no (laughs) that I just does not apply to me yeah and you know it's so funny when you look back at like the golden girls for example which you look so ancient and they're our age. It's so weird. Yes, They were our age when that show was being like, when it was at its peak, right. They were all in their 50, 51, 52 years old. And I look at that and go, they, we are just so different Mm -hmm. than they, they portrayed them to be. Now, I don't know what their lives were really like, like in their lives, right. When they were not on, on stage or on, on camera, but still, I look back at all of the characters from that time that were being, we were, and all we did was, I mean, for the most part, a lot of Gen X, all we did was sit in front of the television. We only had a couple right. channels. So you, you know, you watched what you could <laughs> and yeah, we, we digested as much of, of any kind of media that we could, because there was nothing we, that's what we entertained ourselves with. And everybody, all of the shows painted this light of these people. They looked so much older than they actually were. And then you look at us and here we are, it's 2023. And we're like, yeah, no, that's not, that's not Mm -hmm. who we are. We're tattooed. We color our hair. We, we, we are still young in our spirit. And I still feel, I mean, in my mind, I feel 25 or 30 yeah. most of the time, you know? Me too, and, until I try to go for a run. And then that doesn't, then my body reminds until me. Until you try to do something where you're like, okay, now I know I'm 50. Yeah, now I feel it. <laughs> now I feel it. I'm like, I asked my husband this morning, I'm like, do you ever hurt? Because I used to think of a run as clearing my head. Now I think of pain. <laughs> so I'm like, there's well, something. Your knees hurt, your back yeah. hurts, your whatever. Like we're, so our bodies remind us that we are not the young people that we are in our sure. minds. And now I, I've talked to some people older um, and, and they'll, you know, they, you hear people will say, well, yeah, they're still young in their minds as well. They don't, they don't in sure. their mind see themselves as that age, but their bodies, that's where I think the body decides you're, you're, you're older, but I do think we're taking better care of ourselves than, which is so weird because everything just seems so backwards with food and, and, and our sure. just quality of life. Right. Uh, but medicines come a long way, et cetera, et cetera. But I look back at like the way that my parents ate, like the way food was then versus now. And do you I'm think like, it's healthier? Well, it was actually healthier. It was, yeah. It was healthier. So why were they not living better lives? Yeah, you know, that's interesting. Go, How is it that we're here? I do think there's something going. I don't know. I do. We, think we, we were did. raised on hamburger helper. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe I think that's we're pickled. What... I think all the preservatives <laughs> they were feeding us when, when, when uh, processed foods really yeah. were coming out. And I made a joke the other night about the first microwave. I don't know if you remember your first microwave. Of course. It was they were gigantic. I'm pretty certain that whatever gamma rays were coming out of that <laughs> microwave did something to us as well because they're just <laughs> we're pickled somehow. I don't know they pickled us. We're preserved. But we're definitely not aging the same as the generations that came before us. And I don't know what that is. I don't know why I look at other, like I could look back at my mother at 50 and we are completely different people. Yeah, me too. Yeah. What drives me crazy, I don't know how, you, like people always go to image with age and I don't like, I don't know why that's such a thing. Like who cares if you want your hair purple or I want my hair long or whatever. Why do people put these boundaries around it? No one our age actually does, but it's like the people online or that have this issue with it. I don't know what that's about. Like who defines I, that? There, it's the stereotypes. It's the, st- now, believe it or not, I do get a lot of hate. I get, a, I get way more love, but I get a lot of hate even from people in our own generation really about my hair color. It's not everybody, but there are some that are like, why don't you act your age? Well, what does that even mean? Yeah, what does I've mean? never been this age. I don't know how to act this age. Like I'm just, I'm, <laughs> we're all, you are, we are this age. We are acting it. This, yeah, is, I'm our, act, this is, this is how I'm going to act at my yeah. age. And so I do poke a lot of fun at that, like the stereotypes and sort of these labels that people have and these expectations that people mm-hmm. have of, of well, who we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to act, how we're supposed to look. 
And I do make, I make a lot of content about that because I'm like, we, yeah. we, are, we are not those people. We were dying our hair with Kool-Aid packets, people. That's like, right. And sun was, in. Le- I put lemons in the sat in the sun. <laughs> we literally streaked lemons in our hair. Yes. And we, and we put baby oxide. oil and fried on silver yes. in the sun. We did all Which I don't know how we're, how we're aging the way we are considering <laughs> the sun damage we did to our bodies it's without true. using sunscreen. I don't know how we're where we are. But it, yeah, there is, I do poke a lot of fun at that because I, one of my goals coming into this year, when I really evaluated my content and like what I wanted to do for 2023, one of the big ones I wrote down for myself was dis, just destroying, disturbing, disrupting this idea of age mm. because age is truly a state of mind. Yes. And I also make the, I also often talk about not only is age a state of mind, but youth is a state of mind. Mm -hmm. So I want to change it from talking about age being a state of mind to youth is a state of mind. Mm. You know, to be older might be to be wiser, but to be young is beyond measure. And I don't think just because I achieve a certain level in life Mm age-wise that I suddenly lose that. I lose the luster of being young or the spirit of being young. Youth is a state of mind, not age. And so if you consider yourself old or you tell, that's why I stopped telling myself that if you start telling yourself and perpetuating that idea that you're old or yeah. you're past your prime, or you can't color your hair, whatever color you want, or you can't wear your hair long. If you want to mm-hmm. all those things that you tell yourself, you can't, who makes up these rules. That's great. That's great. One of my close girlfriends who's 60, just turned 60 and she was, she looks, she literally does not, I mean, you would never guess that that's 60. Like, I love that she's representing 60, but I asked her, I'm like, what's your thing? Like, what's the main thing? Is it like how you're eating the nutrition? Like, what is it? And she said, you know, every day for the last decade, the first thing I say when I wake up in the morning is it feels so good to be 35. And she said, not because I'm ashamed of being 60. Cause she goes, I, I, and not because I want to be 35 again, but it's some, a state of mind. Like if I, in this, like, I feel good to be 35. She says, that's what she exudes. And like, she still, she does trapeze. She does all this stuff. That's she awesome. just doesn't even put that limiter on her. And I, and I, and I absolutely love that. And I too, just like you caught myself doing those same things about getting old. And I have an almost 16 year old and she, same thing called me out on it. Like, why do you, why do you always say that? Like, why are you saying that? Because it's what we tell ourselves or what we've been told. And then, so the things, the lessons that we're taught, the things that we're told, the, the expectations that are put on us, you know, I always talk about kids. The the one thing that we, we raise them to our jobs to keep them alive. But one of the (laughs) things that they're really taught is in their youth is conformity, like to Mm -hmm. conform, Mm -hmm. like you, you have to, you have to fit in, you have to conform. There's certain rules, there's certain rules that you have to live by. Mm-hmm. And we're, that's sort of the landscape that's being painted for you as a, as a child or in your youth. And it's looking back at all those things that we were taught and the conformity we were, you know, the spoon fed and the expectations and all these things that we carried into our adulthood. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach my kids different. I'm still teaching them to, they have to, they, you, you have to not, you can't break the law. Those are, <laughs> those are rules you have to follow. Yeah. But beyond that, like just to shatter those ideas of, uh, those are not your ideas. Those are somebody else's yeah. ideas. And so when we, we take those on, you get, they get in your head and, and occasionally I still catch myself because it's, it, you're, we're, it's wired, we're wired that way. And so it's undoing, unraveling sort of that wiring and the minds, that's your friend's mindset that mm-hmm. tells yourself, if you it's, it's, I'm so thankful to be yeah. 35 or I feel great at 35, whatever the words are, those affirmations that she says to herself, because that is a belief she's, she's raising her own vibration to believe that. And for me, I do this. I don't wake up saying I feel I, I'm mm-hmm. so thankful to feel 35 or whatever, but I, every day I'm like, ah, today I feel 20, you yeah. know, or, uh, today I, I I feel good. It's, I feel 25. Some days I wake up, I feel 80. It just depends <laughs> on the day, you know? And so it is a mindset. It's very yeah. much. And that's what I'm trying to share with people and empower people with is changing their mindset, changing just because somebody told mm-hmm. you or you somebody something gave different. you this belief system that you have. Uh, which we are all, that's what parenting is. We're, we're, we're building a belief system. We're building their foundation in hopes that they go out and are like, you know, decent human beings. Um, it's when you get to, I feel like when I hit a certain, when I got to this age, I started wanting to undo that. I want my own belief system. Yeah. I want to build, like, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. I don't really believe that I have been believing it all this 
all these years because that's what somebody else told me, not what I really feel. For sure. So I'm trying to help other people or empower other people to start seeing themselves differently. Do you that- find, um, I, I was like kind of looking at who I surround myself with and my friends. And I realized that I have friends of all different ages. Like I have friends in their sixties, their seventies. I have friends that are my age. I have friends in their thirties. Like I have, and I think for me, that's actually helped contribute to having this different mindset because I don't honestly think about it around my friends. Like I'm a 35 year old friend working out with her or hang out. Like it just feels that it gets rid of that boundary. I'm wondering if you have that in your world too. Are you do you have different ages of friends? I do, we, we do. We have, we have a pretty good um, circle of friends and they vary everywhere from in their thirties. And uh, there's, I'm, I'm one of the older in my bigger group of friends, but w- there are a couple that are a little bit older than me, but I've got friends that are 60 and I have a son that's 33. Mm. So when I look at when I'm with my son now, it's so funny because I joke, I'm like, you know, we're going to grow old together. You realize <laughs> that, right? Like it's, he's not that we're not that far apart. Yeah. I had him when he was 17. And so I look at him and I'm like, he's just, he's a, he's a grown man. He's my son, but he and I have such an amazing relationship and yeah. he allows me to experience his youth as, a, and I, I'm also trying to rewire him in, in his age where I'm like, I know I taught you all these things that were taught to me. And I'm trying to help him see himself sure. differently too. And not, so when he arrives at 50, he hopefully is way ahead of the curve. Um, but yeah, we do. I have, I have a good, well-rounded and I, I, I get, because I make a lot of Gen X content, I get a lot of Gen Xers that are like, a lot of zennials, millennials, yeah. that are older millennials that are like, they, they, I don't really see myself as a millennial. I, I identify more as a Gen X. And I'm always like, look, generations are made up. They're, they're just a way to label us. They're buckets or boxes to put people right. in because that's how the world likes it. They like things to have their place. You do you. You, you mm-hmm. don't have, just because somebody tells you this is when like you, that your years, you're a millennial, you can't, you can't be in the club, yeah. which is essentially what some do. Like, no, you're, you can't be, you're not Gen X, you're not cool enough. It's again, just chop chipping away at those ideas that are other people's ideas. You can be whatever you want to be. I'm like, if you want to be Gen X, be Gen X. I have Gen Zs that follow me. I have millennials mm-hmm. who follow me that, mm-hmm. that look up to me or that see me as like a big sister. And I also have boomers in their seventies that, follow yeah. me, you know, and so I like having that variety because I also like to have somebody to look up to or somebody that is, that has more experience than me. Mm-hmm. And I also want to help younger people. And I think there's a lot to learn from the young. Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot that they can teach us besides just how to use our cell phone. You know, <laughs> I think that there's a lot that they can, I know how to use my cell phone, but it, that's a running joke of like, you know, we don't know how to use technology. Well, my but, daughter taught me TikTok, so I wouldn't be on there if it wasn't for her. So. There you go. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, none of my, well, I guess my Lily, my, she showed me a little bit on TikTok, but I don't really let her, I'm not, I don't yeah. let her. On there. No, she doesn't have her, she's not on her own, her own, but she know she knew enough about she knew how it. To like she could figure like, are, they're, they're, when I couldn't figure it out. She's like, ha, she figured it out. Like when yeah, I'm stuck, they're basically like, born with a device in their hand these yeah. days. So, I mean, they just know how to use it out of the, before it even comes out of the box. But yeah, I think, I think it's good for us to have a, a wide variety of ages around us because I, again, I, wisdom, wisdom, Mm -hmm. I only know, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And, and so for me to be able to have people in my life that are older than me, that have more experience than me, that I also can ask questions or pick their brain. And, and likewise on the opposite end, I can learn from the young people. Um, I just, I, I like, I don't have any problem with any of the generations. I mean, I got two alphas upstairs and they, they teach me stuff every day. My nine-year-old, as I said, taught me one of the biggest lessons that I could learn when I was about to turn 50 years old, which is so what? So like you, you're not like you're old because you're saying you're old. It doesn't matter. And so that was a huge lesson for me. And when you, you mentioned that you have, we have people that are our age that actually say, why don't you act your age or, or don't, or get triggered by thinking things that you say or how you look or whatever it is. What do you think is going on with them? Do you think it's because they haven't been able to step into their power? Like, what do you think is doing that? That's giving them that. I I do think that it's, I think, so you have, you have some very rigid, so you got different ends of the spectrum, right? You have people that are very rigid and you have people that are just loosey goosey, whatever. And then most of us sit somewhere in the middle. Some of them are very rigid and don't like change. I just think they, they have this. And again, when you're going against your belief system, that's a very hard thing to do. It is not natural for us to go against our own belief system. And so it, it 
pushes it it pushes buttons for them and and goes against their belief system and makes them uncomfortable. I really think it's about their comfort zone and um, their ability, not inability to really see outside of their own little world. Like they just that they're they're on that rigid side of like, no, this is how it's supposed to be. This is the way it's always been. You you know, and you're not you're not playing by the rules basically. And those people either aren't at a point in their life where those doors have opened for them yet. Um, because I do feel like a, I suddenly, when I turned 50, it was like, when I called an awakening, it was just like, all of a sudden there was a door that unlocked for me that was mm. never, never there before. You know, it just was not there. And I think some people aren't there yet. And maybe some of them will never get there. I just give people things to chew on things to think about that. Hopefully maybe you'll help them find mm -hmm. their way mm -hmm. there because life is too short not to really live and, and embrace and be happy and find joy and all those things. Life is just too short. And I feel sorry for some of those people that probably are so rigid, they'll never find their way out of that space. Yeah. And so I do think it's because I make them uncomfortable. You know, yeah. I, I, that's probably what it is. It's, it's my, my rebellion, my freedom, my, um, my big middle finger that I throw up to, <laughs> to everything uh, it, it, that makes them uncomfortable. And, yeah. but the majority of people sit more in the middle where they're, they, they agree, but still a lot of them haven't found that door. Uh, and sure. that's, those are the people I want to be able to try to help, to help them find their way to that door so that they can experience more of life now, um, instead of living in the past or worrying too much about mm -hmm. the future and just kind of living in the moment. And I spent most of my life living elsewhere besides right totally. here. So, so I notice, I notice when I, cause I, my business for a long time, my whole brand was around fitness and fat loss for years. And I, when I would get hate around that stuff, I, what I used to realize is that it was triggering something in women that if they saw me as fit and they were not fit, they would, that they'd automatically go to, Oh, you're Photoshopped or you're taking st whatever yeah, steroids or whatever. It's I get, always I get that now too. <laughs> It's always like something, you know, and, and I used to get super triggered and one hour. And then what I realized is it's, oh, they just haven't seen the possibility in them yet. They have not seen it in them. They, so they, they don't think, believe. yeah. So they think it can't be a reality for something else. So I think it's the same thing with right now, like Jenna X or you and I stepping into possibility and enjoying our life. Like it's, if they haven't seen that possibility for themselves yet, it feels very confrontational or triggering for them because they don't believe that that should be, should be possible or it is possible. And yes. so like what you said, it is a mindset thing. And I think if you are listening and you find that you have done that, like you just really look at people that are sharing content online. They generally want to help people. Like they want, like, I don't know a person that would genuinely ask me like, Hey, what are you doing? Or can you help? Like I would help. So versus I'm going to say, you know, screw you for asking, like that's not right, the case, yeah. but it's interesting. They are quicker to want to tear down versus saying, let me learn from that. Maybe I can learn something here. Yeah. The, I, I get, I do get occasionally where I'll get a little bit of that. The majority of people are people that want to, they, they're yeah. like, they want to know more. They're like, what is your story? How did you get here? They want to know, they feel yes. like it's some kind of secret. And I thought that for a long time, like there was some secret that was being kept from me to being happy. There was a secret mm. that was being kept from me to understanding what it meant to have joy in my life, like to feel what freedom really felt like. And, and, you know, I think there's so many people that want that for themselves and don't know how to get there or how to find that, that secret mm -hmm. door that's there. Um, and I'm just trying to help them, uh, like, identify those things in their life that they need, those barriers that are in their way, you know, the things that I guess the, the stuff they need to move out of the yeah. way so they can see the door. And yeah. a lot for a lot of our generation, I think it's a lot for anybody, but I know specifically because I talk a lot about our generation, there's a lot of unhealed scars there. There's a lot of them harboring a lot of uh, resentment and anger and pain, and they haven't forget, they have, they don't know how to find forgiveness, you know, they, and and I always say forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. It's not a gift you give somebody else. And so when I learned to finally forgive and just let go, like that letting go process of things that I couldn't change, things that were holding me down, things that were holding me back, so much of my life changed for the better. And so it's trying to help people understand how to let go, how to forgive, how to move past that pain that's holding them in the past. Mm -hmm. And live in the now, be present now, because what, as I said, what's in the past is that is behind you for a reason. 
And um, there's so many of them. I, I, the comments, if on any of my videos, if I ever, and I haven't even talked about the really dark stuff, I, I tend to avoid that because I don't want to trigger people. And I do know some of them get really triggered, but I have made a few videos that are a little bit more on the topic of like things like, you know, the punishments that we had as kids or, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, the, the weapons, the, are, ba- the belts, like we'd be put yeah, in jail now. The weapons like, that were used on us yeah. that would put you in jail today. Like, like it was standard that your parent could take a belt off and sl- you know, yes. it's like, that was normal. Actually, anybody could hit you with a belt. It wasn't even yeah. just your parent. I mean, yeah, you, teacher could whacked, you would get whacked in school, you know, oh, I, I mean, remember that you have to ever have to go in the corner, the dunce hat. Yes. Whack people on the hands with, with rulers and, yeah. and they hit us with wooden spoons. And so I, I, I've made content around that. Yeah. And the, the comments are just always insane, insane comments that really hurt. Like I, I just, I can feel, I feel the weight of the pain. Like what kind of like comments that in denial or like saying, no, no, acknowledging. And then like, like putting their own comment about what happened to them, the trauma. yeah, yeah, the trauma. And you can just, and you know, mental health is not something that's easy for our generation to talk about. I feel like we should be talking about it more because yeah. we had to be um, tough. We weren't, it wasn't like, a, it exactly. wasn't like everyone had a therapist. It was, you just no, had to talk. Nobody it had a therapist. No. Nobody had a therapist. No one did. Therapy was not a thing. No, it was, it was stop your crying, suck yeah. it up. Oh you, yeah. You gotta be tough. If somebody was bullying you, the solution was to go fist fight it out. And I, it just, we didn't have that. And, and there was a lot, there's a lot of stigma attached to mental health when it comes to our generation. Mm-hmm. And so many, so many of, uh, of people in our generation, I think could absolutely benefit from therapy, be, me, myself. For sure. yeah. Um, and so reading those comments, I can just, I can feel the pain from these people, yeah. like that, that they're carrying the things they're carrying with them, the, that they're harboring and that the relationships that they don't have with their parents mm-hmm. who are still living and the, the, that, that the things that they're holding on to that are, I know impacting their current life. Mm. And those are the things that I'm trying to chip away at little by really little good. make fun of at the same time so that it's easier to digest, but there's an underlying message there of like, listen, we we don't, we're not there anymore. Like we're all hitting our, we're in our, getting into our fifties now. It's, it, it's time for us to live, to enjoy life mm-hmm. and ha- mm-hmm. and be happy and let that stuff go. I don't know if I, I generally swear a lot. I'm being really, really yeah, good. No, it's good. It's good. You can um, swear. I'm holding back. Did you yeah, catch it's okay. me? No, you can myself? Swear. Um, but that's the stuff that I poke fun at because I want to flush it out so that we sure. can talk about it. We can have dialogue about it and people, they, it's very therapeutic to let, the more you speak about it, the more free you become. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's uh, so I, I, I'm, I used to make a lot more Gen X content. I'm very selective now when I make it, it's okay. not every day. I'm, I'm careful because I usually, if I, if I go down a certain path, I just know it's going to open up a, a Pandora's box. Sure. And so I'm, I'm careful because I realize I, I, I probably trigger people and I don't, that's not my intention, but I do think we need to talk about it more. Mental health is absolutely a topic that we should be talking about. So it's interesting because not, you are funny on social media, but you, ha- you also have this underlying therapeutic tone. So it's making sense now talking to you because you are very intentional. Like you're not, she's not the one that just gets on and does dumb trends. Like you're literally, you're you are either responding to something that came up that had you thinking, or you're speaking into like a lesson or something that you're observing. And it's, it's really informative. And at the same time, kind of funny, especially when you're putting somebody in their place. Oh, I do enjoy that. People are like, why do you, why do you feed the trolls? I'm like, cause it's, it makes me feel good. No, it and she, it's, it's, just makes it's, me it's, feel good. You all I have to check it. her out this out because she'll literally say, listen, I know you're 20 and you're a man and you don't are a boy and you don't understand yet. Or you'll say you, she just speaks into, she has empathy for who's messaging her. And then she shares from an enlightened state. <laughs> like I do. I try. Say. I try. I, I've been nicknamed the sheriffist. I didn't give myself that name. That's what other people have given me that nickname, the sheriffist, because they're like, they need their therapy session because it's entertaining. And it also, yeah. again, like I said, it gets them thinking um, because at the end of the day, that's, I mean, for me, if I'm going to make content, people are like, well, why do you do it? I'm like, because I just want to help people. I just, yeah, I, do and it you do. Because I enjoy it. I don't get paid to do it. I don't get paid to be an influencer. Um, and 
that's what a lot of people, they, they're like, well, you know, you, you get paid to do this. I don't, I don't get, I get pennies from TikTok. Your, is your, do you have a business that's totally separate from everything? I do. I have two, I actually have three businesses. What, um, what is your business? Like, what do you do? So I own an online boutique uh, called Feather and Vine. And then I own a skincare company. Um, and I get a lot of hate for that. Uh, if I share that with people because they, you know, they're naturally like, oh, she's a sellout. And I'm like, it's my company. What? No. Be a sellout. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, but they think I'm repping for some skincare company. But or who cares if you them. were, this is what people don't understand. Like if you, like, if you wanted to rep for companies, who cares? You you exactly. have an audience. Like that's how we learn about things. Oh, so. I get so much pe Gen X people in Gen X will say, oh, we're Gen X. We don't, I mean, they literally will call themselves out and say they're Gen X and that we, you know, we're, we don't sell out like that. Like I don't, I don't need, I don't basically don't need to be okay. repping for a company because we're not, that's not who we are. And I'm like, I'm I glad still they work for pay. free. I'm glad I still they gotta pay my free. bills. <laughs> I still gotta pay. Somebody's gotta keep the lights on around here so I can and the internet so I can record these videos yeah. for you that you're digesting every day for free. But anyway, I own a skincare company and then I I at what has come of my social media platforms is a snark junkie. So I own I own a, a novelty essentially oh, wow. a merch store called Snark Junkie that is just but like that's so fun. Shankovich coffee. Oh, I love that. I didn't even um, know. You were that's I design amazing. them and then I'll put like some of my quotes on stuff. Oh, and people, fun. Yeah. So, but yeah, that, and I've been in business. My boutique has been in business for seven years. My skincare company for almost four. And, um, and my skincare company is called Wholesome Hippie. And so people always like, but I, people ask me, they're like, well, well, how does your skin look? Yeah, so your good? skin's amazing. I, I only use my own, I, that's all I use. I just, yeah. but it's not just, it's not just beauty. We sell like a bunch of homeopathic stuff for pain. People are so opinionated and asking why you're like, I don't believe anyone works for free. So that's a very weird comment. I, I get saw, a ton of that. <laughs> that's really funny. I saw somebody, I was reading some thread the other day. I don't know who's that was on, but somebody wrote underneath it. They said, my toxic trait is I don't buy from any links that any influencer shares. And I'm thinking, well, that's weird because you wouldn't have learned about the thing if it wasn't for the person that shared the content. Like, why would you intentionally say, I don't want to help them. I don't want there them. There are people in the world that again, I, I'm, I scratch my head daily. Yeah. The, the people, the, the, the people, the people, I don't even like people. I joke around. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I don't, I don't like, yeah. I like a bit of distance um, because I read stuff like that too. And I'm just, yeah. I scratch my head and I'm like, like why? why you love a, or the fair, I call them the fair weather fans that love me until I say one little thing that, yeah. you know, that makes them uncomfortable. Now and they're triggered. Like, oh, and they I'm say, unfollowing. I'm, I'm unfollowing. unfollowing. They always announce their departure. And yes. I'm like, this is not an airport. You do not need to announce your departure. You can no. just leave. Uh, better and yet, as if you even know, care or notice with all the followers you have. It's the so people who need to tell me that they're leaving, you know, that I just, first of all, I get thousands of comments a day on the three platforms oh. that I'm on. I'm like, I, you're, if, I, if you're lucky enough that I actually do see your comment telling me that you're leaving, <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm probably going to make content out of that because sure. that was lucky. Fine hysterical. For me. <laughs> I have people that unfollow me because of something my husband posts. So I get that. Nice. Like, my husband's not even on social media. He's got like his own personal, but he's, he happens to be an opinionated husband. You don't always agree with your spouse, but right. he'll, you know, he'll post something and I'll get screenshots. I'm unfollowing because your husband, I'm of like, course. okay, well, there of you course. go. I, it, it, again, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And a lot of them are people that are in our our yeah. generation, which is why I'm like, again, all I do, all I can do is remind myself all the time. There's a spectrum. Okay. Totally. Most of us sit in the middle, <laughs> but you do have people on each far end. Those are the people I don't really care. I, I don't actually want you following me. How no. about that? I'm glad you're leaving. And um, social media is so weird because in real life, this would not happen. You wouldn't be at a party and someone walked up to you and says, I am no longer your friend. <laughs> like it just wouldn't happen. Exactly. I made a video, um, not, I guess maybe last year, kind of about that, where I had, I was getting a bunch of hate. I don't remember what it was about, but I finally was like, you know what? The internet is an amazing thing. Back in our day, the way we solved beef was not through some comment that you left on somebody's video, you, we threw hands. Okay. Like you, you would be like, meet me at the park at four o'clock. And not only did you meet them at the park, all your friends came and everybody watched. And that's how we dealt with stuff was you got punched in the mouth that we don't do that today. If people are hiding behind their keyboard or behind their screen and they feel very empowered to say things to complete strangers that they would not say to somebody's face. It's and true. that's the thing where I'm like, I can tell you this, what you see with me is what you get. If you meet me on the street 
or you meet me, uh, you meet me yeah. in a restaurant, or, I'm going to be the same person, For all sure. the time. It's just who I am. But there are those that do troll or, or are very mm-hmm. negative on social media. And then in person, they're- It's like the road rage totally concept. It's like road rage. You know, you it, see it people is. get like full nasty. You get road rage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we all do at some point, you know, like someone cuts you off and you're like, ah, and you're, you know, then, and then you're really nice at your appointment. So I think it's, it's kind of like that same thing. You're in your little bubble and you think you're hiding and it, and then, but it is weird. And it's the bravery. It's very- they, they have a lot of bravery when they, when they're, when they have a screen that there is just a screen. That's yeah. it. They, they don't, they don't they always have a picture of a flower or a pet as our profile always. or no picture or yeah. no picture whatsoever. Yeah. User, um, user 15, seven, nine, four, right. something I, I don't care to spell out because it's just not worth my time. But, um, no, there are, there are, it's always, it's always those type of people for the most part that have either no content or no followers or whatever, which doesn't matter. There, there, a lot of them create, I think, create accounts just intentionally oh, to yeah. pull and to, you know, they just want attention for whatever reason. And um, so that's why people are like, why do you give them the attention? I'm like, well, every once in a while, I just, it's for me. I don't yeah. do it for them. I do it for me. It makes me feel better. For sure. uh, because when you asked me earlier about how do you deal with that? Sometimes it, I do get in my head. Sometimes mm-hmm. it does get to me. It makes me question like, well, and maybe it's me, you know? And yeah. I think a lot of people do that. Like other people project their stuff onto you. And you internalize that and you start questioning yourself for sure. And you start questioning if it's, is it me? Is it me? Am I the problem? You know? Mm-hmm. And, um, it, so once in a while, I, I, it just makes me feel good to just respond, um, and get it off my chest and I can move on for you sure. know, I put it behind me and, and, and go back to my happy life. I think it depends um, where my hormones are for the day. There's, it depends it, on the, well, that's what I'm saying. It does definitely, that definitely plays a part. You know, it depends on where I'm at. Am I, ha- am I having hot flashes that day? Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, it just depends. And, and I've been making a lot more content about that, about menopause. Too. Oh yeah. That's a whole nother fun topic. <laughs> oh my gosh. The women, you know, I mean, the stuff we are going through physically. It's wild. Mentally, um, and you, you're a little luckier than me because your kids are a little bit younger, but I got the lucky combination of a daughter going through the hormone shifts, you know, PMS, all the stuff, teenage, right at the same time. Mine is 12. She's okay, 12. So right there. So you're getting there. Her yeah. and I are like this, like <laughs> yeah. literally. Almost I, 16 like, is like a whole nother. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm not ready. And I've yeah. got two of them. One's nine and one's 12. Yeah. Now my son, my oldest is he's a, he's a boy. I raised a boy first and he was easy. And these girls are going to, they Different. might be in the grave. They might <laughs> be the thing that, that just offs me, you know, because I, I look at them and I'm like, I don't understand. I, I don't remember being like that. Um, I'm sure I was, <laughs> but I don't remember it. Okay. And I'm just, they're, they're just, I'm not, I'm not, re- I'm not wired for, first I of all, was tell- I was telling I'm my husband about young kids. I was telling my husband how I was afraid to talk to my daughter sometimes. I'm like, I don't, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to get. Like, and he's like, well, now you know how I feel. <laughs> so I guess I'm doing the same thing to him. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> We're both going through it. Well, yeah. the, you know, the guys, I, I, I sympathize, but at the same time I look at them and, and, and I'm like, but I, I don't really have a lot of sympathy for you. I was having, we were, I was live mm-hmm. last night and joking around. I was talking about my mammogram recently mm-hmm. And I had a little bit of a scare. I had to go back for extra mm. screening, which everybody get your, get your mammograms or your ultrasounds or your 3Ds, just get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, it's important. I had to go back for additional screening. And I was talking about how, how painful, like how they, they, oh, yeah, they, 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 pancake you they down. smash like a pancake, right? Yeah. And I had some guys in there. And so I started, I said, I just want to know, like, cause they started talking about how they got to get checked. And I was like, well, but we do, they smush, do they smush them in a, like a pancake? Like, are they, are they putting them in a vice basically telling you not to breathe um, and not to move? And they were like, no. So we came up with a new name um, for the men. It should be, they should have to go get a testogram instead of a mammogram. They should need a testogram. And um, that if guys had to actually, cause we were, I was like, I just need to know, like, what do they do? No. And they're like, well, they just kind of, you know, I said, they just touch them for you. They, 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 cause if you guys had to get them smashed, yeah, like it's we different. Do, you guys, they would, you would never go. They would never get it done. They just yeah. would never do it. And the stuff that we have to go through um, just in general about hormones and our bodies yeah. changing and menopause and mammograms and, and gravity. And, what's that? And gravity all gravity and ever, I mean, if you've had kids, you know, yeah. there's all kinds, there's a whole different set of things that come with having kids and <laughs> sneezing is all, not the same. 
your, my body's never been the same ever <laughs> since I was 17. It was just never the, it's never recovered. Um, but yeah, the stuff we go through and, uh, it's, it's funny. So guys, I, I feel for you guys, but I don't mm-hmm. at the same time. I'm like, don't look at me for sympathy. Cause I, I, I just, sure. I, I'm empty. I, I have, I have none for you. Yeah. <laughs> so what I love about you too, is you do something that I, that I do. And I look for in other people is you do, you poke fun of it without it bringing you down. So it's like this note of like, yes, things are changing. We're not saying it doesn't change. Like I, I'm not, I can't, I don't like when people say like nothing changes. It does. Of course it changes, but it's, we can laugh at it. We can, and there's more to our lives. There's more to it. There's a lot of so many, there's so many benefits with aging too. Like I, we know so much more now than we knew in our twenties and our thirties. And oh gosh, yes. Like now so if much only more. I could take this wisdom and be 20 again, that would be oh, amazing. Yeah. Right. But that's the thing is that's why I say to be older is to be wiser but to be young is beyond measure, right? So yeah. uh, just because I'm older, I have the benefit. We have the benefit mm-hmm. of wisdom, of experience, of resilience, of what it means to persevere, to you know, to to what it, what it means to get ahead in life. We've exp- we've had those experiences under our belt, and I wouldn't trade those to go back to twenty. No, I I, I, I I don't. I wouldn't repeat my twenties because they were tough. Twenty no. in your twenties are is is a tough decade, Super and I didn't tough. really start feeling like I got my my life even remotely together until I was in my forties. Yeah. You know, so I tell people too, don't, don't be afraid of your forties. Your forties might be the best decade that you've ever had. Cause for me, it was the best. Oh, I feel the same way. My forties were pretty epic. Fifties kind of hits you. It hits in a different way. Um, I feel like it's literally a whole different thing after 50 as and in forties. It's a, it's really a whole different thing. I mean, you're definitely changing things in forties, but it's a whole different. And I've heard 60 can be the same way. So we'll, we will find I've, out. But I've been told now I'm told that the pain, the pain level goes up when you hit 60. Great. Um, <laughs> I, I have heard because I do pick, we'll poke a lot of fun about yeah. the pain, pain, it, everything hurts for no yeah. reason all the time. Yeah. Um, and I'm told it gets worse. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not really looking forward to that, but I have been told that it just gets better is what I'm told. Yeah. Um, we now, just, maybe we just stop caring as, as much or we can't hear everything. So we stop. <laughs> maybe we can't, we can't see it and we can't, we can't hear, hear it. it. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. And we start going to bed a lot earlier. So. If I can't see it or hear it, it doesn't exist. How about that? It just does not exist. <laughs> just cross that off. That doesn't, didn't happen. <laughs> um, no, I do think that, uh, things get better because of what you just said, which is that um, we still care anymore. Like that's the other big, that's my number one go-to right there. That's my biggest lesson. I probably had on social media more than everything is to stop giving your yeah. Cause way. like no comment on your hair or my hair is going to affect, like, I don't, it, it really no, it doesn't. doesn't I'm, I laugh at the person saying it, but I'm like, it doesn't make, I'm not going to go change what I look like because you said that. No, I'm, if anything, I'm going to go make my hair even more purple and yeah. blue. I'm going to get more tattoos. Okay. I'm going to swear more because I I can, it's my life. It's my, this is my world. And I tell people, you have the power to silence me in your world, but you do not have the power to silence me in mine. And I will speak how I want to speak. So you have the power to just block me. Okay. (laughs) I don't, I I don't, I, I, you can just make me disappear. It's so funny to me. The people in my comments are like, why do you keep showing up in my feed? I'm like, well, clearly I'm in your feed because you don't know how to use the block button. (laughs) You, you can just block me. They okay? think you're messaging them personally. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I, so I, that's a good idea. I should best be like, Hey, you could just block. I just usually block yeah. them yeah. on my end to do them a favor. No, so but I've had have- people ask me like why I keep sending them. I'm like, I'm not, they don't know how to use their social media. Like I'm not sending they them don't. anything. They think they I'm do. putting it in their feed. <laughs> I, 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 there are people who tell me I'm sending them things too. And I'm like, yeah. I don't, I'm not sending you anything. I promise. I'm sending you zero things. I, yeah. I don't, anything I don't even know you is automated. It's not for me. Okay. Or it's not me at all. It's somebody pretending or they're to stalking all your comments. So the algorithm knows they want more of it. So well, there you that's go. The other thing I tell well, you're, you keep seeing me in your feed because you keep engaging with yeah. my content. You keep commenting. <laughs> Just like I see baby cows every day and send my husband. I'm like, because oh. I like baby cows and I look at them every day. Yeah. I, well, I don't another. even, my feed is a disaster. My, all my social media feeds are just a. So utter- Sherry, one of the best things I did and anyone listening, I, I cleaned up my, especially my Instagram feed. Like I really wanted to follow other uplifting midlife fun women. Like I, I like my feed is either people I actually want to learn from and watch and make me smile laugh, or it's a baby cow. Cause I think they're cute and fun. 
but I, anything that doesn't make me feel good, I've gotten rid of. And I think anyone, everyone should honestly do that because it's like that way I don't get stuck in the scrolling and emotions and whatever. I just, it's just, it becomes an uplifted curated place for me. Like I follow a lot of Gen X midlife women now that make me laugh that yeah, are fun. I, I have a lot. I have a lot of them in my feed. My TikTok feed has gotten a lot better. My TikTok feed used to be a disaster. And now most of my TikTok is just full of what I'm talking yeah. about, which is mindset and yeah. uplifting, empowering things, messages, things that I hope find me that will resonate with me. Um, and my Instagram is mostly just what you just described. Yeah, probably. Um, it's my Facebook feed. That's a Oh totally. yeah. I got off Facebook for two years. Other than I had a business-based Facebook that I pushed up to, but I got literally, and I just went back on it the other day. I hadn't been on it in two years. And I, my first post on there was something about, I signed off two years ago and I, because of all the politics and all, and I just, it's oh, still yeah. the same. It's literally still the same. Like nothing changed. I, unfortunately I have almost 800,000 followers on Facebook and I, I, yeah. so I, I try not to spend a ton of time there digesting because it's so toxic. That's how, yeah, my, mine has 2 million on my, on my page, yeah. but I don't even see the face. I don't do you, do you, is yours a page? Cause you should, I don't even see the feed. On I have page. a pay. Well, it's my personal Facebook I've had since 2000 okay, that has 800,000. I have a fan page as well, Got it. Um, but my businesses are on Facebook, which is why. I've never oh yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I have to, I, Facebook For is sure. how I do business. And so I, but I'm careful. Like I let Instagram auto post over to Facebook for the most part. Right. I try to go on and I'll just watch, try to just watch my videos for reading, sure. people, not watch my videos, but read comments. I try to respond to some occasionally, but I don't spend a ton of time there because it's, it is, that's probably where the majority of the toxicity is. A lot of the, sure. um, the hate and stuff that I get comes from over there. So I spend most of my time on TikTok or Instagram. Um, yeah. just, you know, digesting content from those two platforms, not really digesting for people listening that are maybe not creators and are, I mean, I say if you, one of the quickest ways you can start feeling better is to intentionally look at what you're bringing in feed wise, like whether it's social or news or books or all, I I mean, because I, I know what, like what has really changed and helped me so much tremendously in the last two years is what I read, listen to follow watch who I interact with, who I interview on my podcast. Like just, I'm very intentional. So I don't let myself get into those um, right. conversations right. that I don't want to have. I completely agree. I'm the same way. I don't watch the news at all ever. I have sure. alerts set up on my phone. If anything does like yep. a disaster would happen, I would get notified. Otherwise I don't die. I do not watch any mainstream media whatsoever because I when either. I did during COVID, it just had me oh, awful. out of control. Yeah. living in this state of fear all the time. Mm-hmm. And I just don't choose to live there. Mm-hmm. And, um, same with, same with the stuff I digest in social media. If it's something that I just don't want my feed, I just not interested or I block it. I just yeah. don't see it, but, um, books, same way, things like that, whatever mm-hmm. content, whatever, any kind of media or anything that I'm allowing in front of me, I just want it to be the things that resonate with me. I hope to get messages from it. I hope for it to enlighten me. I hope for it to make me laugh. Yeah. Um, you know, the, and I, I'm completely with you. Everybody should do the same. That's why I tell people if I am, I'm not for everybody and I get that I am not, and that's okay. If you need to decide who is for you and who is not, and it's okay for you to block and for bless sure. and release, you know, bye. I don't yes. need you in my life, which is why I'm becoming more. I never really used to block people on my end, mm-hmm. but I'm becoming a lot more, um, free with my block feature, yeah, I block. you know, because it's just, it, uh, it disturbs my peace and I'm not going to allow it to disturb and anything that disturbs or disrupts my peace. I is agree. Gonna go. So I feel if something's consuming me, if it's not just a quick, like I can just glance over it and ignore, if it's like consuming me, then I'm going to block because it's, you're because going it's down not, a rabbit hole yeah. and you're just like, I know I occasionally no. I'll go down a rabbit hole and I have to, I have to tell myself to stop yeah. because it will, it'll erode at your, my, your mental health. It'll erode yeah. at your state of mind. It'll erode at your, um, your, how, your good, like feeling good. It can, it can make you mm-hmm. feel good or it can make you feel really crappy. So I'm so intentional about this that I've even, I had guests scheduled on my podcast that when I saw them do something like out of that, I ended up not having it on my podcast. Cause I'm so committed to what I want to curate into my world right now. I love that. There's I only so much, we, we, there's so much we can't control, but there's some things we can. And if I can control that, I'm going to, I always say, focus on the things you can control, let go of all the rest because yes. They're, you know, you, that, that, and that's why I tell them you are in control of your world. You are not in control of mine, you know? So you have the power, you wield your power, how you choose. Mm-hmm. And 
Um, because in my world, I, this, I am my own universe. Okay. And I am in control of my own universe, just like everybody else is. And, um, people don't understand that they can, they can be in control of their own space, their own, they have the power to control the things that they allow in their life. And they're also in control and have the power of what they mm. don't allow in their life. And, you know, I just, I want more people to understand that. And I didn't, I didn't know that I didn't figure that out until later in life. And now that I have, I think that's why I have the platforms that I have. I have the voice that I have. Um, I'm writing a book. Like I have, you know, all this stuff that's going on in my life. That's positive. It's good for me. I never okay. in a million years thought I would write a book. And okay. somebody reached out to me and said, I think you should write a book. And that's so fun. I was like, all these things have come to me because I've let go. I feel like because I've yeah. let go and I have just allowed myself to be in the now and share my light with other people, okay. share my laughter, share my light, share my, my wisdom, my experiences in hopes that it'll help somebody else. And at the end of the day, the way I see it is if I help even one person, then it's worth it for me. Sherry, you are fantastic. I'm so glad I got to know you a little bit better. Um, hey, likewise, everyone, you've got to follow her on, on Instagram. She's the real slim Sherry. I'm going to link yep. it up down. Is it same thumbnail? Is it same um, name on TikTok? Where I, I'm the same on TikTok. Okay. Yep, okay. Same on TikTok. And I'm going to link up all of your sites and everything. So people, I've got to know about your skincare line now and all the things because I will send you some, that's I'll amazing. happily send you some. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so everyone, you've got to follow her. She's hysterical. You will will be so inspired by her. So empowered. You'll love her. I'm going to link everything up in the show notes so you can find her. Thank you, thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you. And I hope we stay in touch. It's been, it's been a pleasure. And uh, we're no, I didn't even ask where are you? You're on the West coast, right? I'm on the West coast. Yeah. Well, I'm on the East Coast, but we should stay in touch, you know.